Understanding asynchronous apex. Future method. A future method runs in the background, asynchronously. You can call a future method for executing long-running operations, such as callouts to external web services or any operation you'd like to run in its own thread, on its own time. You can also use future methods to isolate DML operations on different subject types to prevent the mixed DML error. Each future method is queued and executes when system resources become available. That way, the execution of your code doesn't have to wait for the completion of a long-running operation. A benefit of using future methods is that some governor limits are higher, such as SOQL query limits and heap size limits. The above image depicting the difference in thread processing between Apex normal transaction and in future method. The specialty of the future method is that it executes when the resources are available and does not out overhead on the server. This is the reason that execution of the code does not have to wait for the completion of a long-running operation and also we get higher governor limits when we use asynchronous Apex. Some consideration before we start implementing the future method is that it should be declared as a static method and the only return type it can have is void. Secondly, the parameter defined for the future method must be primitive i.e. no Salesforce subject can be passed as a parameter to the future method. The reason an subject is not passed in the future method is that there is a possibility that the sent subject might change between the time the future method is executed. To interact future method with the subject that already exists in the database, we can pass the ID of the object instead and then fetch the latest version of the record in the method itself and then perform the task, as shown below. Below is a skeletal code of a future method that interacts with an external web service. For this we have to add an extra annotation to the method to make the platform aware that this method will interact with an external service, as shown below specify, callout equals true, to allow callouts in a future method. Specify, callout equals false, to prevent a method from making callouts. Key future method considerations. 1. Use at future annotation before the method declaration. 2. Future methods must be static methods and can only return a void type. 3. The specified parameters must be primitive data types, arrays of primitive data types, or collections of primitive data types. 4. Future methods can't take standard or custom objects as arguments. 5. You can invoke future methods the same way you invoke any other method. However, a future method can't invoke another future method. 6. No more than 50 method calls per Apex invocation. 7. Asynchronous calls, such as at future or execute batch, called in a start test, stop test block, do not count against your limits for the number of queued jobs. 8. The maximum number of future method invocations per a 24-hour period is 250,000 or the number of user licenses in your organization multiplied by 200, whichever is greater. 9. To test methods defined with the future annotation, call the class containing the method in a start test. Stop test. Code block. All asynchronous calls made after the start test method are collected by the system. When stop test is executed, all asynchronous processes are run synchronously. 10. A common pattern is to pass the method a list of record IDs that you want to process asynchronously. Limitations of future methods. It is not a good option to process large numbers of records. Only primitive data types support it. Tracing a future job is also typical. Can't call future from batch and future contexts. One call from queuable context is allowed. 1. Interviewer. Why do we use future methods? Interviewee. You can call a future method for executing long-running operations, such as callouts to external web services or any operation you would like to run in its own thread, on its own time. 2. 
Interviewer. Can you write the syntax of a future method? Interviewee. Methods with the future annotation must be static methods and can only return a void type. 3. Interviewer. What are the considerations while using future methods? Interviewee. 1. Methods with the future annotation must be static methods. 2. Can only return a void type. 3. The specified parameters must be primitive data types, arrays of primitive data types, or collections of primitive data types. Notably, future methods can't take standard or custom objects as arguments. You can pass the list of record IDs that you want to process asynchronously. 4. Interviewer. What kinds of parameters supported in future methods? Interviewee. You can pass primitive data types, arrays of primitive data types, or collections of primitive data types as parameters. No, S objects OR objects as arguments can be passed. 5. Interviewer. Why subject type parameters are not supported in future methods? Interviewee. The reason why S objects can't be passed as arguments to future methods is that the subject might change between the time you call the method and the time it executes. In this case, the future method will get the old subject values and might overwrite them. 6. Interviewer. Can we fix the order in which future methods will run? Interviewee. Future methods are not guaranteed to execute in the same order as they are called. When using future methods, it's also possible that two future methods could run concurrently, which could result in record locking. 7. Interviewer. How to call future methods from Process Builder. Interviewee. To call future methods from Process Builder, call the future method from the invocable method. 8. Interviewer. What could be the workaround for subject types? Interviewee. To work with S objects, pass the subject ID instead, or collection of ids, and use the ID to perform a query for the most up-to-date record. 9. Interviewer. How can I perform callouts from future methods? Interviewee. To allow callout from the future method annotation needs an extra parameter, callout equals true, to indicate that callouts are allowed. 10. Interviewer. How can I call a future method? Interviewee. You can invoke future methods the same way you invoke any other method. 11. Interviewer. Can I write the above statement in a batch job? Interviewee. No you can't, because calling a future method is not allowed in the batch jobs. 12. Interviewer. Can I write a future call in trigger? Interviewee. Yes, you can. 13. Interviewer. From which places we can call future method? Interviewee. We can call future method in following places. Trigger. Apex class. Schedulable class. 14. Interviewer. So, consider a case. I have written a future call in the account's trigger update operation. And I have a batch job running on account records and does DML on them. Will the future call be invoked after DML? Interviewee. Since you are in batch context, the trigger runs in the same context too, so as soon as the account records get updated through the batch process or through any future method, the trigger would throw an exception saying, future method cannot be called from a future or batch method, as a future method cannot be invoked from future or batch method execution context. 15. Interviewer. How can avoid this exception condition without using try catch? Interviewee. We can update the trigger logic to leverage the system is future. And system is batch. Calls so that the future method invocation is not made if the current execution context is future or batch. 16. Interviewer. So in any case, I can't call a future method from a batch job? Interviewee. Calling a future method is not allowed in the execute method, but a web service can be called. 
A web service can also call a net future method. So, we can define a web service having a future method invocation and call the web service from the execute method of batch job. 17. Interviewer. How many future methods can be defined in a class? Interviewee. Any number of. There are no restrictions as such. 18. Interviewer. Take the below case. Nineteen. Interviewer. How many future calls will the above code invoke? Interviewee. This code is an invalid code as a future method can't invoke another future method. Thanks for watching Salesforce Start.